What's going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. I'm your host, Max Torres, publisher and lead editor of Ducks Digest, covering the Oregon Ducks for Sports Illustrated over on Fan Nation. It is draft season. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Last night, I had a cool little take talking about what the NFL draft means for Oregon football, both now in the immediate future and down the line for the future of the program. But we got some big news to talk about, and that is that Kayvon Thibodeau has been selected fifth overall by the New York Giants in the 2022 NFL Draft. And to break down the pick with me, I am joined by Patricia Trena. She is the publisher of Giants Country, covering the Giants for Sports Illustrated. And then she's also the host of Locked on Giants. Uh, so make sure to check out some of her stuff if you're looking for some Giants content. Patricia, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, Max. It's been a whirlwind uh, first day of the draft. We're getting ready for day number two tonight and day number three tomorrow. And it's like Christmas for, for uh, NFL fans because we're finding out all the new pieces and faces that teams are bringing in and really exciting so far for Giant fans. Right on. That's awesome. So I know we in the college ranks, we have National Signing Day, but that's pretty much just a one day, you know, cut and dry thing. But you got multiple days of draft coverage for for someone who isn't in the sports journalism industry, what, what's your day kind of looking like right now? Because you're full steam ahead. Well, right now, I think I'm operating on fumes. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff, you know, because I'm doing multimedia. I'm doing podcasts. I'm doing videos. I'm doing radio spots. I'm trying to write. I'm trying to edit you know, stuff over at, at Giants Country, which is the Sports Illustrated Fan Nation site that I, I manage. So... It's like I'm bouncing around from thing to thing to thing in order to try and keep up with stuff and not let stuff, you know, go too long. But uh, it's a lot of long nights. It's a lot of, you know, put, putting together pieces, coming up with different perspectives, scheduling interviews. It's, it's, it's just, you know, it's a lot of stuff for one person. But if I didn't love it, I wouldn't be doing it. I'd probably be retired by now or something. Uh, but I do enjoy it. I enjoy the feedback I get from the readers and the listeners. And, and um, you know, I just love talking Giants, uh, you know, football. And, and I'm excited to be here with you. Awesome. Well, we're excited to have you on. So let's jump right into it, Patricia. Kayvon Thibodeau, number five to the Giants. What, what are some of your rapid reactions uh, to this pick? Oh, man, when they picked Thibodeau, it's funny. When the board was falling the way it was and the Giants went on the clock, I went on my Twitter account and I said, could it be? Could it be? And I had a, I think I had a picture of Thibodeau or I might have mentioned his name. I said, could it be? And everybody's like, don't toy with us. And, of course, we were, we got the picks early sitting in the in the, um, the the press room over at the, the Quest Diagnostics Training Center. We get the picks in before they're announced on TV. And sure enough, you know, I'm trying not to spoil it. So I'm kind of saying, oh, I think it's going to be. And I would say, you know, I would, you know, I think it's going to be Kit Thibodeau. And everybody's like, don't toy with me. Don't toy with me. And sure enough, you know, once the pick becomes official, I'm like, boom, there it is. And everybody's like, yay. So it was really exciting, I think, for Giant fans. Because, you know, look, if you had said to us probably a couple weeks ago that the Giants would have a chance at Thibodeau, I would have said, uh, I'm not even going to go there. But towards the last couple weeks, I thought maybe he might fall to them. And there was a scenario when I ran my, um, my last mock draft in which I had him and I had um, Evan Neal, who they, the Giants took at seven, except I reversed it. I had Neal at five and Thibodeau at seven. So I got the order wrong, but I got the first two picks, I think, correct. So uh yeah, it, it was just exciting because a lot of fans were like, wow, we finally got a pass rusher, you know, so it was pretty cool. That's awesome. OK, so you you were ahead of the curve. But like you said, you just had the uh, the the pick swapped a little bit. So congrats on that. That's pretty cool. That's something to hang your hat on. Um, let's see where else did I want to kind of go with this. So with, with the Giants, um, they they have they were viewed as one of the winners of the, the first night of the draft. Right. Both the New York teams did did pretty well. Um, with with the Jets getting some uh, some good picks um, with Sauce Gardner uh, and Garrett Wilson, I believe it was. So I don't know how much uh, Giants fans like to hear about the the Jets. So we'll, we'll tread lightly there. Um, but but with Kayvon Thibodeau being paired with Evan Neal as part of this day one draft hall, um, j just what do you think that means for this Giants organization under 
new head coach, Brian Daybell, and then I think first year defensive coordinator, Dom Martindale. Yeah, I mean, it's a new era of Giant football. Look, I mean, for the ever since the Giants won the Super Bowl in 2011, the team has slowly been deteriorating. And they've tried to fix it. You know, Jerry Reese, who was the GM for a number of years after that, tried to fix it. Dave Gettleman tried to fix it. Unfortunately, they did it the old Giants way. And the old Giants way, which might have been successful 20 years ago, it was becoming outdated, some of the, th the ways they were doing things. They were taking risks on players that you sat there and you say, my God, what are they looking at? What are they seeing? They were telling us, like, for example, with the offensive line last, last year, oh, this offensive line is going to be better. And it's like, well, how do you know they haven't put the pads on? Oh, well, we know how they work. Well, big deal. That doesn't mean anything. You know, it's results is, the, is what you determine, uh, what you use to determine if a, if a group is better. So this new regime, the Giants ownership finally went outside of the organization. They brought in Joe Shane from the Buffalo Bills, which has been a successful organization over the last few years. Uh, Brian Dable was the offensive coordinator up there, a very creative mind to jumpstart the offense, which has just been absolutely abysmal the last several years. And uh, they brought in Don Martindale to be their defensive coordinator. He was formerly with the Ravens, didn't get renewed, I think. I think you know, people, I'm not sure if he didn't get renewed or was fired, but he's coming in and he runs a very aggressive style of defense and has specific um, traits that he wants in his players. So the real cool thing about it, and, you know, we, this is generally how front offices like to work in the NFL, but the coaching staff will usually tell the, the front office, hey, this is the type of player we want for this position, that position, that position, and here's our, how we plan to use it. And it's a collaborative effort. Now, the Giants had that previously with Dave Gettleman, but, you know, towards the end, there, there might have been some disconnect. And there was definitely some disconnect, I think, in the Jerry Reese era with, with Tom Coughlin. So, you know, just it's a new era for Giants football. Right now, a lot of people are encouraged by what Joe Shane is doing. He's just operating differently. It, you know, the old Giant way is, is dead there's a new Giants way of doing things. It's more in line with what the NFL calls for today because the NFL is changing. I mean, it's no, it's a lot different than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And it was time to get some new, young, fresh perspectives and, you know, just retool this off this, uh, this team into someone who could into a team that can be competitive down the line certainly important to to adjust to the times right it sounds sure. like that's kind of the the refreshing uh perspective from at least the first day of this draft and then kind of a um you know new blood coming in with not only the draft picks but you know the coaches up up at the top a lot of people that probably listen to this podcast patricia don't know much about the giants and maybe we're a little bit hesitant you want to see a guy get taken high right but usually that means the team isn't doing too well on the field but i think it's a little bit of a, a, a different situation with the Giants and Kayvon Thibodeau going there because they have some solid pieces on that defense that he'll be joining. you got Leonard Williams, who was a former first rounder, who was originally drafted by the Jets, uh, comes over to the Giants now. And then you have Aziz Ojolari, who was out of Georgia, um, Dexter Lawrence from, from Clemson, Xavier McKinney in the secondary. Just tell us a little bit about the, the situation that Kayvon Thibodeau is going into and how you think that might help him just get his career started. Yeah, so Don Martindale with Baltimore was known for being very aggressive. He's going to come after the quarterback. Um, he's going to try and move the quarterback off his mark, try to force some mistakes, maybe get some you know turnovers in the process. Very aggressive. They're not going to just sit back and react. They're coming after you. So if Kayvon Thibodeau likes being aggressive, he likes getting after the quarterback, he likes being in that attack mode all the time. He's going to be he's going to just thrive in this defense that Don Martindale is, is putting in. Now, we only got to see a little smidgen of it at uh mini camp. I think it was on April 20th we got to see it. Um so still a lot more to to see as to what how Martindale is going to deploy stuff. But from what I could see, some of the alignments, I was like, wow, we didn't see this stuff before. There was some a little bit of creativity that maybe we didn't see with the previous defensive coordinator, Patrick Graham. Um, but uh, look, the pass rush has always been kind of a, a problem for the Giants because, look, 
you want the cornerbacks and, and the defensive backs to be able to hold their coverage, but you also need the guys up front to get home. And I can't tell you how many times for the Giants, they just barely miss getting home with the pass rush. And I'm talking even forcing so much as a hurry or, you know, a hit or, or even getting a sack. And the defensive backfield can only hold their, their coverage for so long. So you need both ends to kind of work hand in hand. And the Giants really didn't have that on a consistent basis. Kayvon Thibodeau coming into this Giants defense, I think is going to help. And it's going to allow the back end to just hold their coverage long enough so that the front end hopefully will be able to, um, you know, put the pressure on the uh, opposing quarterback. And here's the other cool thing about it. I think, you know, I've been screaming about the Giants not having a Batman pass rusher for the longest time. They've had a bunch of Robins, but not a not a Batman. I think Thibodeau can develop into a Batman. And if you look at the Giants' history and the two Super Bowls, the last two Super Bowls that they won, they won it because they had a really good pass rusher. It was like a 3D pass rusher uh, type of system. They've got two quality pass rushers and on the edge. They've got um, Ojolari, as you mentioned, and they have uh, Thibodeau now. Leonard Williams is a defense alignment, but he could certainly rush the passer. So that's a big, big step for the Giants, and that's something they've been missing for you know a number of years. Yeah, it was wild, Patricia. I didn't know it had been that long since the Giants won the Super Bowl. I think that was that the year of the, the infamous helmet catch. No, that that's 2007. 2011. Oh, okay. 2011 would have been the Mario Manningham uh, sideline catch. You know, the throw. Oh, okay. Him, they make him go to Mar. Uh, make him go to Manningham. I think was the quote that Belichick had, and sure enough, they did, and came back to bite him. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for catching me there. I mean, clearly, I'm not up to date on on all my Giants history. All good. Um, but. Um, one of the things that I'm interested in to get your perspective on Patricia, you know, you're learning more about KT. We were just on your podcast to get kind of my take, but since you're a little bit more, a lot more well-versed rather than me in the NFL, the giants have had some really good defensive linemen in the past, right? We, we talked about a couple already, but Jason Pierre, Paul, Michael Strahan, who, who's already been pretty vocal about being excited to, to mentor, uh, cave on, um, and then Jason Pierre, Paul in your eyes, Patricia, what would be, Maybe it's too early to say, but just wanted to get your thoughts. What would be a successful rookie year for, for Kayvon? We don't have to dive into the stats, but just what, what do you think would, would be a successful year for him? I think you want to see him get better every week. I mean, you know, uh, ideally, if, if you're talking, you know, sack stats, you want at least eight, preferably 10. It sounds like a lot, but it shouldn't be, you know, too hard to do, given that it's going to be an aggressive defense. Um, but, you know, look, I'm looking for improvement. Is he better in week five than he was in week one? Is he better in week one than he was at the start of training camp? And that's kind of what I look at. You know, how is the technique changing? You know, is he better defending against the run? Is he getting his hands up more as maybe as opposed to before? Little things like that that make for a successful defense player or any player for that matter, little things is what you look for. You know, how is he doing in the classroom? Is he playing faster? Or is he out there kind of thinking? And you can tell when you watch these players that some of them are out there and they're kind of like, uh, what do I do? You know, and they play with just a little bit of hesitation in their game. So that's what I, I'm hoping to see out of Cape on I, you know, from what I understand, he's a very smart player, a smart uh, football IQ um, I think he's going to do really well on, uh, in this defense, and uh, I can't wait to see him in minicamp in a couple of weeks. Certainly excited to, to see him get his NFL career going. We were talking about the some of your hopes as far as his sack numbers, just to run people through it. He had eight as a true freshman in 14 games, and then three, um, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, hold on. Let me see that. Nine total sacks as a freshman, three as a sophomore, and then seven as a junior. Um, but COVID obviously messed things up and you, it made it a little bit trickier to evaluate people. And he had that, that ankle injury as, as a junior, but uh, certainly good to hear for, for duck fans that it sounds like he's going into a great situation um, and, and can get off to a good start pretty quickly. But uh, Patricia just wanted to, before we get you out of here um, for people who are excited to follow Kayvon's career and are kind of going to become giants fans. Let's be honest here. They're going to become giants fans a little bit. Uh, where can people find more of you and your work covering the 
the uh, the men in blue. I don't know if they have a certain nickname. Big blue, uh, big blue wrecking crew, um, giants, giants nation. I mean, <laughs> you name it. Uh, Together blue, I think it's the slogan they're using. Okay, yep, yep, you're right. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can find me on Twitter at Patricia underscore Traina T R A I N A. You can find me on Instagram at Patty Traina. Um, I am the publisher and lead writer over at GiantsCountry.com, which is a SI Fan Nation uh, sports channel. I'm the host of the Locked on Giants podcast, so I do have a YouTube channel if you want to check that out. Um, also, we're on wherever you find podcasts, uh, all the audio platforms like Odyssey, Apple, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, all those platforms. And, uh, you know, definitely, you know, check me out if you want to hit me up with questions or whatever. I, I love hearing from the fans if you're a new Giant fan because Thibodeau was joining Shane Lemieux, who, by the way, used to be an Oregon Doc too. Uh, let's not forget about him. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I'm always happy to give an update or whatnot, and uh, appreciate you having me on, and and I appreciate you coming on my podcast. And I would just invite everybody to check that out. It's gonna that podcast is gonna drop on Friday, April 29th. If you haven't already seen it. All right. Make sure you guys go tap in with Patricia and follow all the awesome work that she's doing. And now I'm going to do the reverse for me. If you want to find more of me, you can find me on Twitter at mtorresports. You can also find me on YouTube at Oregon Football Max Torres, where this podcast will also be posted. So if you guys are watching, kindly ask that you like and subscribe to the channel and like the video. That's tremendous help. You can find my written content on ducksdigest.com, where I cover the ducks for SI. And then as far as the podcast, we are the Ducks Dish Podcast, and we are available on majority of podcasting platforms. So ask that you like and subscribe there as well and share the show with other Ducks fans. But that'll do it for this episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. Huge thank you to Patricia for coming on, and we will catch you guys in the next episode. Take care.